And now we're going to take a look at a precision full wave rectifier circuit. Um, I have drawn the circuit schematic and you can see that it consists of uh, two op amps, two diodes, the one and the two, and a bunch of resistors. But if we take a closer look, uh, we can actually identify uh, some structures that should be familiar by now. We can see that the first part consists of a precision half wave rectifier. Um, and that will be this one over here. All the way up to D2. Uh, we, we have previously looked at, uh, in that case, we had labeled this resistor RF and this resistor RI. So perhaps we can add those labels just so that we can see it's the same exact circuit. So in this case, both RF and RI are just equal to each other and equal to some value R. Um, so this would be our half wave rectifier. Notice that because of the orientation of diodes, we're going to see that it is uh, the one that is associated with the fourth quadrant, meaning the, um, the output is proportional to the input in the fourth quadrant and uh, it's equal to zero for negative values of input. And then the second part, so I will call this part A, and then the second part or part B is going to be a uh, this circuit over here, which we should identify as an inverting summing amplifier. We have two input signals um, which are being applied on the inverting input terminal and the output should be equal to the weighted sum of those two input signals. Uh, one of those input signals is V in, the other one is the input signal coming out of our half wave rectifier, which um, we can give a label to, but let me know first, right? Uh, this is an inverting summing amplifier, inverting summer, which I'm going to label part B. Now, I, I will uh, add a couple of labels in the circuit because they're going to help us in the analysis. For one thing, I'll label the output out of this op amp, V out prime. And uh, the output out of the first uh, part of the circuit, I'm going to go ahead and label VA right here. Um, VA. So, um, Let's go ahead and get started on the analysis. And just to simplify things, we're going to analyze first part A and figure out what's the value of VA, the output of that first part uh, in terms of V in. And then we're going to use that output signal as the input to our next stage and figure out what is the output out of that following stage. So let's get started with part A. And as we have mentioned, it is a half wave rectifier. So uh, wave rectifier. And we don't need to go into all sorts of detail because, as I mentioned, we've already uh, done this in a previous video. So we'll just go fast. If we remember for uh, positive values of the input signal, since the input signal is being applied on the inverting input terminal, the output of that amplifier VL prime, prime is going to try to tend towards negative values uh, because of the orientation of the diodes. Uh, in that case, D1 is going to be off, D2 is going to be turned on or forward biased, which means that uh, V out prime uh, is, is going to set its value uh, to whatever it needs to be to make sure that both input ter terminals are about are sitting at about the same voltage. Uh, again, D1, we can assume it's not there since it's uh, reverse biased. And so the feedback, the negative feedback loop is closed uh, through diode D2 and resistor R. And so the voltage VA is the one that's going to be sitting at the standard inverting amplifier output voltage, which will be negative RF over RI times the input voltage. And that means that V out prime is going to be 0.7 volts below that because that's what the op amp needs to set in order to um, to, to have that output voltage VA there. So 
This is going to be V out prime equal to negative RF over I times V in minus 0.7 volts. And uh, the one that we care about is VA which is negative RF over I times V in. And we'll leave it um, expressed like that for now. Later on, we will replace that RF and RI resistor values with uh, value R. Uh, for V in negative, we have that the output terminal of the op amp will try to go in a positive direction, which means D1 is the one that's going to be forward bias. D2 will be reverse bias. And uh, V out prime, uh, since D1 is forward biased and the cathode of D1 is sitting at um, a virtual ground, so 0 volts, then V out prime is going to be set to 0.7 volts by the op amp. And uh, there's going to be no current flowing through resistor RF, and therefore VA is just going to be equal to 0 volts. And this is consistent with what we had, with what we had seen uh, previously with the fourth quadrant half-wave rectifier. So in other words, if I am to draw my voltage transfer characteristic, V out versus V in, it would be um, zero for negative values of V in and uh, minus RF over I times V in for positive values of V in. Let's move on to the second half of the circuit or, or the second part, part B which is the inverting summing amplifier. And we can see that um, when V in is, uh, let's start with the second case just because it's simpler since the VA is equal to zero. So let's start with the case where V in is negative. Um, then basically what uh, this amplifier is gonna be adding, I mean, we can just write here uh, its overall transfer function or rather its output. Uh, just generally speaking, it's going to provide a weighted sum of V in and V a, which is the output from the half wave rectifier. And uh, we can see that the weighting factor in the case of V in is going to be um, R over R, so negative R over R times V in minus R over R halves times V a. And so this is going to be equal to uh, negative V in minus 2 times V A. That's the output of this amplifier. So when V in is uh, less than 0, we have calculated that V A is equal to 0 earlier. And therefore, my V out out of this uh, summing amplifier circuit is going to be equal to negative V in minus 2 times 0, so minus negative or minus V in. For positive values of V in, we have that V a was equal to negative R f over R i times V in, and if we replace the values of R f and R i here now, we will just have negative R over R times V in, so therefore negative V in. And so my V out in this case will be equal to negative V in, minus 2 times, and VA is also negative V in. So that means minus V in plus 2 V in, or uh, positive V in. So note this, for negative values of V in, V out is equal to negative V in. For positive values of V in, V out is equal to V in. If I wanted to represent this in my voltage transfer characteristic plot, V out versus V in, I will have a straight line with a, a slope of 1 for positive values of V in and a straight line with a slope of negative 1 for negative values of V in. So this truly is performing the mathematical operation that V out is equal to the absolute value of V in. Because of the amplifier action in negative feedback configuration, uh, we get no diode drops, again, because the output of the op-amp is able to compensate for those diode drops. 
And if we wanted to plot the time domain um, representation of V in and V out, we will have something like this. V in will be a sinusoid and V out will be equal to V in during the positive half cycle, negative V in during the negative half cycle. So, um, perfect full wave rectification. Thank you.